Hey everyone, this is Kieran. Today's exercise is looking at the seated calf raise. It's a, I think, underutilized exercise um, in rehab. It can be a bit of a broad, I guess, a general statement, but underutilized in terms of the sense of the load that's given to it. So our soleus muscle in here is gonna be sort of the primary generator in this exercise. And it's, it's a muscle that can, you know, it can lift a, a ton of weight. So, you know, what we're gonna go over today is getting people a little bit more confident with putting some weight on, um, and also maybe introducing something that they haven't thought of, had they had an ankle injury or a calf injury, or sometimes even a knee injury. So if this sounds um, useful to you or something unfamiliar, give it a go and see what you think. So our soleus is a muscle that attaches to both of our bones, our, our tibia and our fibula, and it then crosses our ankle joint. So it's a single joint muscle in that it allows plantar flexion, but it also can affect a little bit of our ability to invert and evert of the subtalar joint. So it's, while single joint, it's got a little bit of applicability to that next joint below the subtalar. The thing is though, that ability to plantar flex or to go up is very important. Like anything with Rehab 101, you want to basically recover full range of the area that's injured. And then once the range is recovered, you want to develop strength at the inner and the outer ranges. And if you don't get that, if you don't regain those skills, then it's not just going to magically come back one day. And so even though you might decide that your goals or your preferences change and the tasks you want to do or the things you enjoy doing, you might be exposed at some point in your life to the requirement of that skill and you need that tool to be ready to go. And if it's not, then maybe you injure yourself, maybe you don't, maybe you just uh, have a bit of a, a fear associated with that movement. And so the, the inability to do the thing sort of reinforces that fear and then you kind of start avoiding it even more. Um, and that's a bit of a different conversation, but you can regain confidence by developing some strength. Now, a lot of gyms used to have seated calf raise machines, but enter the uh, functional strength era and um, everything is, seems to be free weights. So in essence of that, we have a free weight single seated calf raise. So, you're very lucky if you've got one of those machines at your gym. If you don't, then this is the setup. Got a step, a bench, could be a kettlebell, could be some plates like this. I've got 40 kilos here. And you're just gonna push it up to the sky and then come back down. You really gotta try and get it right to the edge of your knee so that when you push up, you're going that way and not this way towards me. So you need the hands to stabilize a little bit. And you're really just trying to get that thing up, up, up. And the biggest thing that people don't do is they don't go high enough. And sometimes you need to look, you need a little bit of visual feedback to just check. Or maybe you realize, hmm, maybe if I drop the weight a little bit, I can get higher. Better to do that, get the maximum range out of it, and then progress the weight over time with maximum range. Other things that you need to think about are really crushing the stair. I'm trying to push that stair into the ground as hard as I can. So that effort, I'm really trying to push and recruit. So I'm up and down, up and down. And I'm doing single leg. I could probably comfortably do this upwards of 70 kilos maybe. Now I've trained it, but it's being mindful that those muscles are capable of those kinds of weights. So I think if you've been doing this and you've been in quite light, get yourself to a weight where 10 reps is hard, eight to 10 reps. If you can do three sets of 10, then go a little bit heavier. If you can't do eight reps, it's probably a little bit too heavy. So you've got this window of like trial and error and figuring out hmm, maybe what's the right weight for me. As far as the pushing up technique goes, when you go up, bring weight more into the big toe. And so instead of thinking about the body part, just think about crushing the stair. So if I had my finger there, I'm crushing my finger with the inside of my foot. And then as you come down, just lower straight down. And that step's gonna allow a little more flexibility, but when you come up, really think about crushing. Try not to spin out onto the side, out like this. If 
you've had an injury, that might be something you have a tendency to do, which you have to relearn that skill of back over here. And the reason for that is when you go into the jumping or running mechanics, we need that ability to load through the front of the foot. And particularly as you shift gears into higher speeds, you need to be able to go from the outside of the foot and roll over that second metatarsal to be able to propel yourself off this big toe. And if we haven't got the skill at this level, you potentially are leaving some performance in the reserve by not being able to roll over and propel yourself forward through that big toe joint. Um, so this will help sort of relearn that skill. And then when you go to run, the strength will just carry over, that software will just reboot. So don't be afraid to load heavy on this. It's important to get that strength back. If you're not sure what your strength should be at and you've had an injury, do a 10 rep max of your other side. How much weight can I do on my uninjured side for 10 reps? I could maybe squeeze out 11 or 12, but I'm 10 is good. And then compare with the other side. And if you can't get even close, then you know you've got some work to do and close that gap. And sometimes getting that strength back, um, you know, is, is really the, the big game changer for a lot of people. And you need the heavy weight to do it. You need to go heavy, but progress slowly over time. And if you don't get heavy, you won't get that skill for maximum recruitment back. So something to think about. And hopefully with this setup, you can uh, do it anywhere. Um, and obviously do it safely. Be mindful of the weights you've got, that they're stable, that you can control them, and that you're not going to drop it on your foot and, and break anything. Um, so a few things to think about. Hopefully uh, you're able to set it up at your gym and, and get it going into your routine. If you like this video, then please hit like below. Otherwise, to check out more of our content in the future, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo over here. And to check out our latest video, click up here.